1922 is a Netflix adaptation of the novella of the same name by the acclaimed author Stephen King. The historical horror movie stars Thomas Jane in a transformative role that centres around a farmer's relationship with his son after both participate in the murder of his estranged wife. Horrifying, gory and haunting, the film seems very straightforward, however there is a lot more beneath the surface and many viewers may be left asking questions at the movie's close. Throughout this video I will be discussing the symbolism of the rats and whether the ghosts were real or hallucinations, the latter tying into whether Wilfred killed himself or was murdered. The Symbolism of the Rats Throughout the film, Wilfred is plagued by rats. Historically, rats have brought famine, plague and pestilence and are viewed as vermin, able to be stamped out much in the same way that Wilfred's wife was. Initially appearing to vacate the corpse of his wife, they can be viewed as a clear extension of her anger from beyond the grave. The growing number of rats that stalk Wilfred highlight the decay of his wife's body without having to show it explicitly. As Wilfred's guilt takes over his mind, so do the rats his land, farm, house and even son's body. We start with one rat inside the mouth of his wife, something he reels in disgust at. Another is caught gnawing on the livestock within the barn, and from here they escalate in numbers. Though he feels the barn attack is a violation, he too viewed the herd so menial that he flippantly killed one as part of the cover up. The rats are no different to him, but seeing it play out repulses him. They prey on what he's done. Something made tangible when he's bitten and his hand is amputated, a constant reminder of his misdeeds. But guilt remains and so the pack grows, nibbling at his conscience even when he's far away from the scene of the crime. When Wilfred is in the hospital after his amputation, he has a clear opportunity to admit that he murdered his wife, but he lets the police believe that a Jane Doe was instead his estranged partner. The film doesn't go as far as the book, in that he imagines the rats eating him as he dies, revealed in an epilogue to be due to a self-inflicted wound. But the point stands, they aren't just disgusting creatures, but disgusting creatures that reflect on him to his ultimate demise. That's why the literal nature of the ghosts don't matter, the rats make the story more metaphorical as is and are the real thing haunting Wilfred. Or were they just rats? What makes King's work so breathtaking is that the rats can also be viewed more rationally. First, a corn farm like Wilfred's tends to have rats, so it's necessary to keep a strict waste control to prevent the site from getting infested by rodents. When Wilfred threw his wife into the well and piled on top of her corpse a cow, the rats had a good source to feast upon and due to this were able to reproduce in greater numbers. It's not surprising that the farm, including the barn and house from this point on, were filled with rodents. Wilfred initially believed that this invasion of rats could be the result of his guilt. However, we do see on a couple of occasions the character taking hysteria pills. If you research this type of medicine, they were prescribed for women at the time and contained a mixture of opiates, cocaine and chloroform, which, consumed in large quantities, generate hallucinations on the patient. So you can admit that much of what Wilfred saw was due to the side effects of taking these hysteria pills, combined with alcohol. Were the ghosts real? Stephen King's work is heavily steeped in the supernatural. Throughout his rich body of work there are thousands of examples of ghosts and spectres haunting the characters that inhabit the books. That is why I'm inclined to believe that the ghosts were a true manifestation of the guilt that stemmed from his one horrific decision. In the basement, after being attacked by Arlene, Wilfred recounts that she whispered to me secrets that only a dead woman could know. This definitely confirms to me that Wilfred was haunted as it's the only possible scenario that allows him to know of his son's death in advance. King's work has played with characters who under stress are able to visit or view higher dimensions and Wilfred definitely fits this role. Did Wilfred die at the end? Whilst the book is very clear in its protagonist's fate, the film is left open ended. Personally, I believe that Wilfred survives the encounters with the spectres due to the final line uttered by his son. Stating that his death will be quick, it clearly carries the connotations of his wife's murder which too promised to be fast, 
but instead was drawn out and painful. To me, the spectres want Wilfred to suffer for as long as possible, and now that he has finally confessed, they will want him to take his punishment in the living world before succumbing to the torture that awaits him in the afterlife, the cruelest fate of all. Obviously, a lot of the film is open to interpretation, and I would love to hear your thoughts on the symbolism of the rats, as well as whether the ghosts were real or not. So please leave a comment below letting me know. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel as I produce ending explained discussions weekly, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on the films that I analyse. I recently did one on the Tomb Raider reboot, which discusses the film's end, as well as what direction I believe the sequel will head in. So make sure you check that out next. Thanks again for watching this video and I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.